What's going on, everybody? Dre Ball on DreAllDay.com. Welcome to another vlog. As long as y'all keep engaging, commenting, liking, sharing, everything else you could do with a video, I'll keep these going, as I say, every single day. Today, doing it a little bit later. I wake up a little bit later on the weekends. I don't wake up as early. I told y'all that earlier this week in the earlier vlog. This morning, I did a bike ride to uh, where I rode to South Beach and back, which was a it's about a 15 mile bike ride, but I was riding pretty fast today. I wasn't trying to cruise and see sights because it's kind of breezy today. Not that warm outside, it's like 70, 70 something out here. So I got through it pretty quick, probably like 90 minutes, something like that ride. Came back home, then I went straight to the jacuzzi. I didn't even do the vlog. I was thinking to do the vlog, but then I was like, no, let me do the jacuzzi and I'll do it after. So that's what I'm doing right now. And we're gonna get right into these comments. As far as it being Saturday, what I do yesterday? Well, yesterday, y'all know B.I.G., the anniversary of his death. I watched the big documentary on Title. Y'all didn't see that? Watch it. If you're a big fan, watch that documentary. I know a lot of y'all know about Big. Some people, some of y'all wasn't even alive when he died. But anyway, let's get right into the, the comments of what people said yesterday. Let's see if we can address a couple of these. Somebody said, uh, respect for taking a long road to play pro ball. Appreciate that, thank you. Now you're talking about working on the game. So the comment that I made yesterday about working on the game, you know, people asking me questions about drills and how do I shoot better and all that stuff. So a people, couple people have follow up comments on that. And I mean, everybody knows what it is with that. I done made so many videos addressing the hoop stuff. So we ain't gotta keep talking about that. Somebody asked, what's the catalyst that asked, that made me develop such a disciplined upbringing, a disciplined mindset? And the answer was upbringing. So that was really coming from my my parents, my mother, my mother especially, she was like a strict disciplinarian. She always wanted to know where we were, my sister and I, what were we doing, who were we doing it with. If we weren't at a certain place by a certain time, she wanted an explanation. She was on top of everything. She was kind of like, in a way, I didn't notice until I got older and I could see how other kids had their parents. But in a way, you could kind of say she was kind of overbearing, just kind of dominating the whole situation. That's how she was even though that part I didn't necessarily like. I didn't really have much to compare it to, but once I found out, I was like, damn, it could have been different. I do appreciate the discipline that I got from it. So that's the part that I took from it. I'm not gonna be that way with my children. I don't even have children yet, but when I do, I'm not gonna be that way with my kids with the overbearing part, but the discipline part that I did take. So I was able to take the part that worked best for me, and that's how I became such a disciplined individual. So that was definitely from a parental upbringing. My father as well. My mom was the one who made most of the rules, you know what I'm saying? So, somebody asked, let's see, let's see. Somebody asked some of my favorite songs by Notorious B.I.G. Let's see, I Love the Doe was one of my favorite. Brooklyn's hey, Finest was actually a Jay-Z song. Who Shot Ya? Uh, one More Chance Remix, one of my favorite songs of all time. Somebody asked me, do I watch Dragon Ball Super? I don't even know what that is, so obviously no. I don't even watch TV, I don't even own a TV. I watch all sports, I watch it on iPad, or I look at stuff on my phone, but I do not own a television, so I, I don't mean I couldn't watch Dragon Ball Super, but no, I don't watch Dragon Ball Super, whatever that is. Somebody asked me what motivates you to get out of bed every morning. I mean, I've talked about that. I started the weekly motivation basically to answer that question. What are the things that I know or that I do mentally to keep me moving? That's the weekly motivation, which is over 300 weeks going now, almost at 400 weeks straight since 2010 is only 52 weeks in a year so you do the math on that the weekly motivation answers that question if you want to know more then read my books i done wrote 14 books for people to understand all the stuff that i do mentally for myself and i wrote the mental workbook for people to understand how i program and condition my own mind so they can do the same thing for their mind so that's the answer to that question I said, you can't believe people still ask me questions about basketball. But yeah, people will always ask. Everybody hasn't been around as long. Everybody comes in at different times. So I get it when people ask the basketball questions, but that's the reason why I make so much stuff so that I don't have to keep answering. I made Hoop Handbook, so I don't have to tell people how to train. I made the videos, so I don't have to keep answering the same questions. That's the reason that it exists. So take advantage of the stuff that I'm putting out. Uh, what else? What age did I stop caring about what other people think and how did I develop that mentality? That's a good question. There isn't any certain age that I think that I was like, all right, all of a sudden, I'm not going to care about what other people think. It was, I would say probably, because it wasn't any like one moment that, I'm just, that the clouds just opened up and God told me to stop. It wasn't anything like that. It was probably, I would say in high school, when I realized that a lot of people kind of just follow the crowd. They do, if they got friends, let's say you got a group of like five friends, one person offering an opinion that everybody else just agrees with it. And 
nobody offers any independent thinking and then everybody who wants to be cool with whoever the cool person is or the known person or whatever the situation they just going to follow the group so i realized then i was like how everybody got the same opinion and everybody's thinking the same thing if you disagree with the group then everybody like says something negative about you or why you gotta be the one to try to stand out and be the eyeball go against and things like that so that's when i realized that a lot of people just don't want to think independently and even when they do they don't want to express it because they think they may be ridiculed or attacked by somebody in the group because they're not going along with what everybody else believes so it was around that time i would say in high school that i noticed it but then you notice it still in adult life adults do the same thing kids do the same thing everybody a lot of people do that thing i ain't gonna say everybody specifically but a lot of people are like that they don't really think independently so that's when i realized since most people ain't going to express what they really think anyway I don't need to pay any attention to what other people are thinking because they're not going to ever let anybody know and stand out in that way. And that's why a lot of people in life just become, you know, followers. They, they blend into the wallpaper. They don't do anything significant. Uh, somebody said 50 degrees ain't cold. You're right. It's not technically not cold, but in Miami, that's cold. We don't usually even get 50 degrees. Somebody asked the ultimate vision for the Work On Your Game podcast is going to be like broadcast from the sky where you don't have no choice but to listen to it. You know when you're in your house or in a building somewhere and the fire alarm goes off and the message comes on hey this is a fire go outside or this is a false alarm but you can't control it you can't turn it off and you just got to hear it that's how i want the podcast to be where everybody just got to hear it like big brother looking over you and you can't you can't control whether you listen to it or not so that, <laughs> that's the outcome for the work on your game podcast somebody asked me about playing against Kyrie, and that i mentioned playing against Kyrie. i mean that's another basketball talk thing yeah I'm not really interested in talking about that. I have played against Kyrie. It wasn't that big of a story. But if there is, I got to think of what it is, and it ain't going to be told here. Uh, Somebody asked, what's my reaction when Notorious Big and Tupac died? Did I cry, or was I sad? No, and no. It was a normal thing. You're talking like the mid to late 90s, 96, Tupac got shot, and then that was September. And then in the following March, Big got shot. But at that time, a lot of rappers were getting shot. So it was a normal thing. Like uh, Big L got shot. Uh, Freaky Tile from the Lost Boys got shot. Uh, who else was it? It was a couple other cats who I got shot. I forget. It was a couple rappers who I got shot that may not have been as known. Then a couple years later, 50 Cent got shot. It was a normal thing. When you heard a rapper getting shot, you're like, oh, all right, rapper got shot, so what? And also at this time, people got to remember, in the late 90s, we didn't have social media. So this news didn't get out immediately. When Big got shot, it was at night in LA we didn't know about it until the next morning on the east coast I woke up at like 10 o'clock the next morning and on the radio they was like yo big got shot we didn't know immediately so it wasn't all this twitter and everybody automatically knows what goes on it wasn't a whole lot of video or nothing you were just hearing about it you didn't see nothing you just knew about it maybe people in New York knew because it was a New York artist but I didn't know about it we didn't know about it till the next day so it wasn't that it didn't spread so quickly first of all and you didn't get to hear what everybody else thought about it too that's another thing because emotion is contagious so for people to get sad everybody some one person be sad and somebody else sees it and sees and sees it but it wasn't a whole bunch of people to share it with it was just the people in your house like yo you heard big got shot and we was the only people who knew then the next day because it was a sunday then when we went to school on monday people was talking about it but it was like a normal thing because tupac had already got shot big l had got shot it was just normal for rappers to get shot so nobody was sad nobody was even surprised it was like all right well here we go again another rapper getting killed that's just what happens and then when it, again when it happened to 50 we was like oh, oh well and 50 wasn't even that big at that time so it was like so what he got shot who cares hopefully hopefully he survives but if he don't hey that's what happened to big and pop so that's that those are the questions here for today uh what am i doing today this weekend i'm working on a couple new workbooks that i'm making i think that's all i'm be doing i'll be reading and writing this weekend i'm about to eat some french toast and pancakes that my girl made we ain't got no syrup so i gotta go to the store get some syrup and that's it I need to give me some snack food. But that's it for today, man. Thank you, everybody, for the questions. Ask me more. Leave them in the comments here, and we'll get to them tomorrow. Everybody have a great Saturday, great weekend. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.